G'day ice cream lovers, my name's Steve Christensen, the ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster down here at Scoop School. It's wonderful to have you join us in this video, the uh, third in a series of videos. If you haven't watched the first two, we're going to link them down below here. We're basically talking about the four, basically the big four things that you need to do when you're putting together your batch freezer. Now, we say batch freezer, it could be a custard machine, it could be a soft serve machine, uh, but uh, they are important nonetheless. I do want to thank our episode sponsor, which is Electrofreeze for this video. Uh, Mark Holden, who is the uh, marketing guru up there at uh, Electrofreeze, uh, has a lot of uh, faith in the Scoop School process here. We have their equipment down here. Um, really great equipment. If you want batch freezers, uh, uh, soft serve machines, shake machines, frozen beverage machines, electrofreeze.com. And if you want to talk to a friendly face, Mark Holden is the guy. Uh, anyway, we thank them for their episode sponsorship. Now, we've been working with our Catabriga here and uh, we spoke in the first video in this series about the first golden rule, which was, if you recall, uh, yes, you're right. Uh, you've got to make sure that rear gasket or that rear seal is on the dasher or the auger, whatever you want to call it. The second golden rule was, ah, uh, yes, you are correct, no metal on metal. When you're putting the dasher or the beta shaft into these machines, again, whether it be a batch freezer uh, or a custom machine or a soft serve machine, you do not want to have any metal surface of the dasher resting, scraping, bruising, uh, denting your uh, freezing surface. Uh, the evaporator surface is the uh, technical term. This video, very simple principle, but if you don't follow it, it could have drastic consequences. And that principle is cold water only. So when you are washing the machine at the end of the night, when you are sanitizing the machine at the beginning of the day, you will want to make sure that you are using cold water only. Let me tell you why. And it's more for your close procedure or the end of batch procedure than it is at the opening. But if you've got a very, very cold barrel or a cold evaporator, if I open up the door here, this surface here can get down to zero degrees Fahrenheit, minus five degrees Fahrenheit, while this dasher is rotating and freezing product. So if at the end of the day, and you've just finished that freezing process. Come on, mate. And you're pouring hot, hot water into a very cold barrel. That massive heat exchange can cause the barrel to implode or damage the surface of the barrel. So you've got a barrel that's sitting on zero or minus five degrees Fahrenheit. You've got 140, 160 degree Fahrenheit water going in on top of it. Again, that massive heat exchange on both sides of that barrel can do catastrophic things. Now some uh, ice cream equipment actually has a sticker on the side that says you shouldn't use anything over a particular degree water. Uh, I know one of the units that we have here has a sticker on the side that says, do not use anything over 110 degree Fahrenheit water in this machine. Now, I don't know what 110 degree Fahrenheit water is. My employees probably don't know. Matthew, who's the uh, video guy behind us here, chief editor, he doesn't know what 110 degree Fahrenheit water is. So the fact of the matter is, if you just use cold water, you will never have an issue in having that damage happen to your machine. So when you get to the point where your machine is put together, and you are ready to put your sanitizer in, this sanitizer should be room temperature or cold water. At the end of the day, when you are washing your machine, rinsing it before disassembly, that should be room temperature or cold water. You do not want to put hot water in a cold barrel. And so, rather than have the different opening procedure and different batch or close procedure, just tell everybody cold water only. A good way to start is basically pour a little bit of uh, that sanitizer into the machine first to make sure that the door seal is not leaking and also your extraction chute seal is not leaking. So once you've seen that there is no drops coming out, you can pour the rest of your sanitizer in 
again, cold water. Um, and you'll never ever have a problem with damage happening to your barrel. So just to reiterate, rule number one, make sure that gasket's on, make sure it's clean uh, and in uh, good condition. Two, no metal on metal. Three, cold water only. Seems like a simple process, and I know at the end of the day you're probably thinking, why don't I just use hot water to kind of you know, clean this machine quicker? It's not worth it in case you damage it. You may be voiding your warranty. It won't be covered by uh, a, uh, a service contract, and then you're in all sorts of hot water, pardon the pun. So, thanks for joining us in this video. Easy or simple precept that could save you probably a whole machine. Uh, if you'd like more information on all of our programs here at Scoop School, scoopschool.com is the place to go. We appreciate, again, Electrofreeze for sponsoring this video. And if you have a quandary, question, or concern about the ice cream industry that you'd like us to touch here on in the podcast, drop us a line, steve at scoopschool.com. Keep on scooping, folks. We'll see you in the next video.